I'll be going through the PSLE 2022 paper for those of you who are sitting for your exams in a while. I hope you find this video useful. Alright, question number one. Okay, reptiles have what on their body covering? Hair is for mammals. Hair is for mammals. Okay. Scales, yes, both for reptiles and fish. Feathers will be for birds. And moist skin would be for amphibians. So the answer is going to be number two. Next question. Caterpillars eat leaves and birds eat caterpillars. So if I have to draw the food chain, it would be leaves to caterpillars to birds. Okay, so what would you use to describe the caterpillars in the food chain now they eat leaves so they are a consumer but they're eaten by birds and so they become the prey okay they are not decomposers and they are also not predators if you eat a plant it's they are not predators okay so herbivores are not predators so the answer for this is number three next one c and d are organisms C produces pollen grains while D does not. C makes its own food while D does not. As long as C makes its own food, it will be a plant. It could also be a fern, but pollen grains are only produced by flowering plants. Okay, so the answer cannot be 1 and 2. And D does not do either of this. So D has to be a fungi. It cannot be a fern because a fern is still a non-flowering plant. Okay, so it... If it's a non-flowering plant, it will make its own food. So the option for this question is going to be number four. Next one. Which of the following is not correct for both the butterfly and the grasshopper? Okay, both lay eggs. That is true. Both the adults have six legs. They are both insects. That's true. Both their young and adult live on land. That is also true. Both have young that look like adults. Now this is... False. And how do you identify this? The grasshopper is a three-stage insect, but the butterfly is four-stage, right? Most four-stage insects actually have a larval and a pupal stage. And at this stage, they do not look like they are adults. But the grasshopper's young is a three-stage life cycle, right? So the three-stage life cycle, the young is called a nymph. And a nymph will look like the adult. Okay, so the answer is number four. Which of the following shows correctly the basic unit of life for a frog and a rose plant? So for all forms of life, the cell is the basic unit of life. All right, seed is for dispersal, egg, and anything which is an egg or pre-fertilization that does not include the basic unit itself. All right, okay, it's just components that make up the first unit, which is the cell. Okay, next question number six the diagram shows the transport of oxygen in the blood blood rich in oxygen is going from the heart to organ x and x is giving blood poor in oxygen back to the heart now the heart will then take this blood that's poor in oxygen and give it back to the lungs right so this is low in oxygen at the lungs a process which will take place is gaseous exchange okay and the lungs is going to give the heart blood that is very high in oxygen. So heart's going to pump high oxygenated blood to the body. So X cannot be the lung, okay? But it can be the stomach, it can be the muscle, it can be any other part of the body except the lung, all right? So the answer is going to be number four. Next question, number seven. The table shows the parts present in three cells. Thick means present, cross means absent. Okay, so we have a few statements here. Now, we have nucleus, chloroplast, cell wall and cell membrane. Cell wall is definitely for plant cells. Now, chloroplast is only for some parts of the plant, like the leaf, right? The root will not have chloroplast. So do not use this to decide whether it's a plant or animal. So which one has a cell wall? P and R, right? So we know that P and R are definitely going to be plants. So maybe I'm going to highlight plants in green, okay? 
this is for plants okay and let's look at the options here and look at q q only got nucleus and cell membrane so we know that this is definitely animal all right so we do not look at chloroplast because r has both so we know r is from the leaf but p has cell wall but no chloroplast this shows that p can actually be maybe the root cell okay where you have cell wall but no chloroplast as it's not trapping light to make photosynthesis so q and r are from from a plant wrong p and r from a plant yes P and Q from animal, wrong. This is also wrong. So the answer is number two. Notice that the answer is number two, but I check all my options before deciding, all right? Number eight, a gardener put some dead leaves around a plant. Okay, so dead leaves around the bottom of the plant. How can the dead leaves benefit the tree? Okay, so we are thinking in terms of benefits for the tree. Now, make food for the tree. This is only done by the leaves and you need to be the leaves from this part okay the live leaves okay so this is not correct prevent animals from seeking shelter this is also not true an animal can seek shelter underneath the tree for shade it can even burrow itself inside the dead leaves to seek some you know rest and shelter enrich the soil to provide the tree with mineral salts this is true because the leaves are dead they will undergo decomposition so they will decompose the minerals goes down and then the roots of this plant will then absorb it upwards okay so decomposition releases all the nutrients back into the ground which will then be reabsorbed by living plants to grow healthily reduce the amount of water that evaporates from the soil this is also true any water that's going to evaporate will then remain in the soil because you're reducing the exposed surface area of the wet soil so the answer for this is number three question number nine which statement about germination is not correct immediately when you think of germination think of the letters wow okay you need water oxygen and warmth so not correct a suitable temperature is needed for seeds to germinate yes we need warmth for seeds to germinate oxygen is needed for seeds to germinate yes a germinating food seed obtains food from the seed leaves this is true okay you will obtain food from the seed leaves this is the stored food right stored food so as the seed is growing the seed leaf is going to shrivel and eventually drop off so the mass of the seed leaves is actually going to go down okay during germination the mass of seed leaves increases this is wrong all right the young plant is going to gain mass until the true leaves appear and then the true leaves are photosynthesized so the seed leaves will actually as the plant grows the seed leaf will just decrease in mass it will not go zero but it will just eventually drop off so the answer is number four number ten study flower j and fruit l so we have the flower and we have a fruit that looks something like an avocado. Which statements are correct? K is developed from an ovary. Now K is the inner portion of the fruit. So this is the seed, right? It's a single seed, okay? Like a mango or an avocado, okay? So K is developed from an ovary. This is wrong. Seeds originally come from the ovules, okay? If you have one seed, you have one ovule. If you have many seeds, you have many ovules. So many seeds, think of watermelon, papaya, etc. Pollination and fertilization took place at M. Yes, this is correct. You need to pollinate the flower and then fertilize the ovary and then you will have fruit that develops. J only has one ovule in the ovary. This is also true. We only see one seed here, right? This one here. So the answer is going to be number three. Okay, question number 11 is a very big question. So let's read the top part first. Do not ignore this top portion. A lot of students tend to look only at the bottom part of the picture. All right. So John studied the leaf characteristics of some plants growing at two heights on a mountain. So we have the upper portion and the lower portion. Okay. So let's look at the characteristics. The plant that grows here, we have three plants here. Their surface area is here and their thickness is here. Then the ones at the bottom, the surface area and the thickness. Okay. 
So what conclusion can I make from his study? So we have 3,600 meters. I'm going to minimize this a bit so we can see all the options clearly. So at 600 meters, which is at the ground level, the plants have larger leaves to trap more sunlight. So larger leaves means I'm looking at the surface area. 2.6, 2.5, 3.9. Okay, the plants on top actually have larger surface area. The plants below, not quite actually. At 3,000 meters, the plants have waxy leaves to reduce water loss. This is not stated, right? We don't have anything talking about waxiness or covered stomata. So at 3,000, the plants have thicker leaves to adapt to the cold. That could be possible because all the leaves are much colder. I mean, are much thicker, sorry. And they gave you a clue here. The clue is the word snow. Always look at the words here in a picture. They do not have to include it in, right? So we are assuming that this is actually very cold. There's snow here. So the leaves are going to be much thicker to adapt to the cold. So this is a form of adaptation. And the height at which the plant grows does not affect the size or the thickness. So let's check. Looking at these two results, the surface area, I mean, relatively the same. We have 2.6, 2.7, 3.9, 3.1. But thickness is, there's a very big difference, right? So the height does not affect the size and thickness of their leaves. This is not true. Thickness seems to be affected. So the best answer seems to be number three. Question number 12. A seed grew into a seedling as shown after a few days. So we have day zero and day seven. We have the root and the shoot, okay? So which graph shows how the length of the shoot and root change with time? So I guess what they are testing you is which one appears first. So the first thing to appear downwards is the root. Then after a few days, you have the shoot growing up. So we need to look for the graph very carefully. The root is the one that is with circle. So the circle line has to come first. So this is appearing first. This is much slower. See, it's going slower. Here also slower, so cannot. So option number three is wrong and number four is wrong. As you can see, the, the root ring starts growing here for option number four, here for option number three. Okay, now let's look at one and two and what is the difference? So the difference between number one and number two is that the root is definitely growing much earlier. Here it almost looks like they appear at the same time at this spot. All right? So here there's a difference. Here seems to be same sort of growth, very similar. One is the most obvious one. The root is growing first. The root starts growing here at this point, but the shoot only starts appearing at this point. Okay, so the option is number one. Question number 13. Ethan conducted an experiment using a plant that has leaves with both green and white parts and it was kept in the dark to remove all the food from the leaves. So we are de-starching the plant. So he covered the leaves K and L. Okay, K is here, L is here with black paper strips on both the upper and lower. And then I wrap a plastic bag with a liquid that absorbs carbon dioxide around K. Now I expose this entire plant to sunlight. So we remove it and we tested it for food. So we try to show the correct result. So looking at this, Leaf K has a liquid to remove carbon dioxide gas. So clearly, if it doesn't have carbon dioxide, there will be no food present, right? So for leaf K, which is under here, be careful. I think most students might miss out that this is K. We may think this is L and K, so be careful with the order. Leaf K should not have any food, right? Because there is no carbon dioxide, so there will be no photosynthesis. All right, so I'm looking for this or this. Okay, so two entries out. Now let's look at L. L will photosynthesize. It has carbon dioxide. It has water from the roots going up to it. It will be able to make food, but the portion that's covered with the black paper will not be able to make food. So it will have a strip where there'll be no food present. So it will look like this. And the answer with both that's correct would be number four. All right. 
these type of questions are tricky, but I, as long as you do them carefully, you should get them correct. The table below shows the breathing rate of two people during exercise. So over time, their breathing rate is increasing for both. So which statement is correct? Ken's breathing rate was faster than Judy's breathing rate. Mm, Ken is actually breathing much, much. He's breathing slower, right? 12, 16, 20, 25, 31. Jude is breathing much faster. So this is wrong. Can breathe in more oxygen per breath as compared to Jude? No. Can's breathing rate increase more than Jude's breathing rate during the exercise? And Jude's breathing rate increased by 14 breaths per minute after 8 minutes of exercise. So let's check number 3 first. Overall, did his breathing rate in the in is his increase more? From 12 to 31, what is the difference? What is 31 minus 12? Let's do a bit of maths. Okay. And then 32 minus 17. The difference between the top and the bottom. Okay. So the difference between these two is 19. And the difference between Jude's breathing rate is 15. So yes, Ken's breathing rate did increase more. Jude's breathing rate increased by 14 breaths per minute after 8 minutes of exercise. This is actually wrong as well. So the answer is going to be number 3. Number 15, Janet measured the volume of an object using the setup below. So this topic is actually matter displacement, okay? So the, va the value here we can't see but it's 6, 8, 10. So this value is actually 4 and here the value is 6. Now, for this kind of question, it seems very simple, right? So we just take 6 minus 4, the object's volume is 2. So to the answer, please do not write 2. This would be a very bad careless mistake. The answer is actually number 1. Okay, so I think some students might actually write 2. The other thing to take note of very importantly is to make sure that your object is fully submerged. Okay, if your object is not fully submerged, then if one of the options is not possible to tell or maybe you need to guess the value, like you have to estimate the value, okay? Because if it's not fully submerged, when you put an object inside not fully submerged, this volume, this upper portion here is not accounted for, okay? So you need to figure that out. So, for, but otherwise, question 15 is quite a standard basic question. All right, next one. Which is not an effect of a force. A rolling ball coming to a stop. Yes, a force can stop a moving object. A paper aeroplane turning in the air. Yes, it can. So this one is stopping a moving object. This one is changing the direction. Forming clay into a doll. Yes, a force can change the shape of an object. Light passing through a glass plane. This is light properties. Okay, so answers number four. All right, next one. 17. Okay, let me just change this very quickly to blue. Okay, add it up. Kumar observed that a flat bit. Kumar observed that a flat bread rose as shown when fried. It became flat again when left on the plate after some time. So when you fry something, you're talking about hot oil, right? And we have air spaces, very important keyword. Now, why did it rise? Because there is air inside, right? And the air is going to gain heat, right? Hot oil, or in this case, actually, it's the hot iron pan, right? Hot iron pan. So it's going to gain heat and it's going to expand, okay? And what that does is the hot air is actually going to cook the flat bread from the inside out, all right? So the answer for this is the flat bread is flexible, no. Solid expands when heated, yes, this is correct but not for this question. They're asking for best explanation, okay? For science, you can have multiple correct answers. What suits the question the best? Air expands when heated. Yes, air does not have a fixed volume. This is also a correct statement, but the best answer is number three. Because the air gains heat from the iron pan and expands, you have this rising of the flat brain, all right? So this is a good example of three correct options but pick the best one all right next one electricity number 18 when a bulb was blown that means fused one other bulb did not light up mm. which 
bulb was blown. Okay, let's expand this a bit. Let's zoom in a bit. Okay, let's do elimination. So if A was fused, right, nothing else can light up, right? Electricity must start from one end and it must come back this way. But once A is fused, nothing can light up. So the answer cannot be number one. Okay, so let's cross out one. Let's try B. If I fuse B, okay, one other bulb did not light up. So let's see where electricity goes now. It can go here. It can go here. Okay. It can also go here and then come here. Right? But it cannot go past here. So yes, if you blow, you blow up B, C will not light up. All right. Then let's just check. So it seems like the answer is number two, but let's check the rest to be sure. If I fuse C, then electricity can go this way. It can even go this way. So nothing is affected actually. So three is not the answer. And if I fuse D, electricity goes this way, right? So you have many bulbs that are affected here. Three bulbs affected, so no. So the answer is number two. Question number 19. Chandra pushed a toy car as shown. What was the distance moved? Now there are two ways to do this question. You either see the distance move from the front of the car or the back of the car. Do not count from front to the back, okay? So let's see. What is this distance right in front here? This is 3 and here it is 12. So 12 minus 3 equals to 9. Answers number 2. Alright? 20. Two magnets P and Q. So this is the North Pole. And what's going to happen is they are going to repel. So what was the direction of the magnetic force acting on P? And the direction of friction acting on Q? So two different things. Let's answer the first one. Magnetic force acting on P. So the magnetic force acting on P is going to force P to move to the left, right? So this has to go to the left. So 3 and 4, okay? And for Q, Q is going to the right, correct? Q is going to be repelled and it's going to go to the right. But... Friction is acting in the opposite direction. When Q moves this way, friction is going to be in the opposite direction. So this question is actually a bit tricky, I think. So friction is also going left. Answer is number four. Now, when you have a table with arrow directions, whether it's for plant transport or forces, etc., do not be afraid to pick the option where both are pointing in the same direction. I think most students expect it to go in opposite directions, actually. All right? All right, question 21. Which material is most suitable for making the face shield shown? Now, the person would need to be able to view everything from the outside. So any object would need to be able to reflect light into their eyes, okay? In order for you to see something, light must be able to pass through, right? So the most important property out of these three, always pick the most important one first, okay? Because everything else is a bonus, right? So allows light to pass through is important. We need this to be a tick. So immediately we will cross out number three. Waterproof, definitely important because you do not want it to dissolve in the rain. So also a tick. And with that, we have our answer because these two is crossed out. So number four. So it's also flexible so that it can bend around the shape, right? Okay, so number four. Okay, so remember for question 21, pick the most important property, all right? Okay, four circuits with identical batteries and bulbs in working condition. In which circuit will it have the same brightness? Okay, so we have to compare it. So let's do units. So let's say one battery, you can just put one unit or two units. So for one battery, if I say that's two units, right? That means this is also two units. There's two sets here, so four units, four units. Now for option A, there's only one bulb and it's in series. So L is going to light up with two units. Here, this is in a parallel circuit. And in parallel circuit, the electric current will be the same, right? 
or rather the voltage actually is the same. So here you have two units and two units. Option C, we have four units. So each bulb will have four units. Now this is in series, so we have to divide each bulb equally. This will be two and two. Okay, so which bulb L will have the same brightness? So which ones have the same brightness? This one has four, this is two, two, and this is also two. So A, B, N, the answer's number, four. You do need to do some working for this sort of question, okay? 23. Chin Kyung wanted to find out which of three metal bars A, B, C, D, and E, F are magnets. He hung each bar from a string and brought them near each other, and the results are shown. Now, to prove something is a magnet, we need to look for one thing to happen. You need them to repel. Attraction, if it attracts, right? It can either be a magnet or it can be a magnetic material like iron, steel, okay? So which one is definitely a magnet? Where do we see repelling here? And how do you see how they move? Look at the string direction. The string is going towards each other, right? So that means this is attraction, okay? Here also going towards each other, towards each other. This is the only one that's showing repelling, right? That means AB is definitely a magnet and EF is also a magnet, okay? So I'm going to cross out 1 and 2 first. Now let's look at CD. CD, okay, so that's why they have two options, right? Now, we know AB is a magnet, right? Okay, so here, B is attracting C, right? B attracts C. And here, a is also attracting C. So if you are not sure how to do this at this point, what you can do is you can put poles for it. So you know that AB is a magnet. So let's say I say A is the north pole and B is the south pole, right? Then A is the north pole, B is the south pole. So here, the south pole is attracting C. Here, the north pole is also attracting C. That means no matter which way I flip the magnet AB, CD is still attracted. So CD is not a magnet, okay? It is just a magnetic, magnetic material, all right? So answers number three. Next question, 24. The arrows PQRS in the diagram represent processors. So we have gas, liquid, and solid, three states of matter. So Usually, when we study this topic, we always learn solid to liquid to gas. So, be careful. The only way you can get this wrong is through careless mistake. Now, condensation is when you have gaseous state to liquid state, right? Water vapor, for example, water vapor losing heat to a cooler surface, condensing into water droplets, okay? So, gas to liquid is condensation, all right? And the one that's going from gas to liquid is P, right? So, number one. Now, if you are not sure how to do this, what you can do is do the ones that you know. So, R is going to be melting, right? Solid to liquid. You can even use ice and water as an example, right? Ice melts into water. Then, water, S will be, uh, S can be boiling. It can also be evaporation. Okay? Then, gas to liquid is condensation. And liquid to solid is like ice freezing, right? So, this is freezing. Okay, so if you are not sure, list out all the arrows and then decide your answer. It's not worth to lose two marks because you do not want to do the breakdown of the working, all right? Okay, question 25. Alice walked barefooted on some floor tiles and then a wooden floor. Why did she feel cold on the tiles but not the wooden floor? So when you feel cold, okay, take note, we, we don't gain or lose coldness but we lose heat, okay? So that means here, right, her feet is losing heat, more heat to the colder tiles than the wooden floor, all right? So the temperature of the wooden floor is higher. I don't think this is possible. It's in the same room, right? So if you are confused about this, I want you to imagine going to your kitchen and you take out a metal spoon and a plastic spoon and you hold it in your hand. The metal spoon will feel much colder than the plastic spoon, all right? The tal is a better conductor of heat than wood. So, the tal is able to gain more heat from her, right? 
when the towel gains more heat from her, she is going to feel colder. So this is possible. Towels transferred less heat to her feet. Nope. Towels transferred coldness. Again, answer cannot be in the form of coldness. Huh? So no. So for number three, just take note. The towels is not transferring heat to her. If the towels, towels is transferring heat to her feet, she will feel warmth, okay? But here she's feeling coldness. So the heat direction, always draw the heat direction is from her to the floor, okay? So towels is a better conductor of heat. So it's gaining more heat from her feet. So she is feeling, feeling colder, okay? So answer is number two. 26. A liquid is heated in a beaker. So from here all the way up. The graph shows the temperature of liquid over time. So what is this process? Now, as long as you have a fixed line in a temperature time graph, this can either mean two things. Number one, there is a form of state change taking place. Or number two, if it's cooling down it, or it's getting heat, it can also be reach room temperature. Okay? So here, it is heated, right? So it's definitely state change okay so this one would be number one why condensation is going to be cooling the graph will go like that evaporation is not a fixed temperature okay melting is also gaining heat right so your graph is going to go upwards like this and this is the point at which it's melting however they already say it's a liquid and melting is from solid to liquid, okay? So cannot be melting, this and this. Answers number one. Question 27. Three springs X, Y and Z have the same length. When they are hung using three identical blocks, the results are shown. Now, if you look at the results, they all extended by 4 cm. However, these blocks are identical. So we know that they have the same mass, right? So if they have the same mass, we have the same amount of gravitational force pulling it down however x is holding the weight of y it's holding the weight of all of this correct but z is only holding the weight of this one block here so for the same amount of mass x is going to extend the least and z is going to extend the most y will be in the middle all right so first for extension graph, the first one to cancel out is number four. Extension means the length is increasing. Number two is also wrong because they are not extending at the same line. They are all holding different weights, but they but X extended the least, so no. And between number one and three, we know that for the same amount of force, okay? So let's say this is the weight, right? X extended the least, and Z extended the most, all right? So answers number three. Question 28. Hassan set up the following experiment in a dark room. A light sensor was attached on the screen and gave a reading of 30 units. So the dark room has a reading of 30 units. Okay. Now, what do you want to do if you want to get the largest possible shadow? To get the largest possible shadow, this block needs to be much nearer to the torch. Or you can also move the torch nearer to the block so basically this distance needs to decrease distance once needs to decrease okay the closer you are you will block more light okay now a good tip is if you forget this during the exam you can just hold out your hand on the table right now and if there's a light above you you can move your hand closer to the table and you will notice that the shadow of your hand is getting smaller and sharper but if you lift your hand away from the table and go closer to the light you'll find that your shadow of your hand is getting blurrer and bigger, okay? So you want to move the torch nearer or move wooden block nearer. So the one that fits is number three. Move the torch nearer to the wooden block, okay? And the light sensor reading will increase, all right? So move the screen away from the wooden block, move the screen nearer to the wooden block, move the torch away. Moving the torch away is going to reduce the size of the shadow, all right? Also, when you move the torch nearer, if the torch is now at this position, for example, okay, so let's say I'm using the yellow highlighter. Here, my light sensor is reading from here. But if I move my torch nearer from this position, I'm going to get much more light shining on the light sensor, 
Okay, you're shining light directly closer to the light sensor. All right, so your reading is going to be increasing. Okay, so that's it for section A, your MCQ portion. Each question is two marks and you want to score as high as possible for this section. So make sure you eliminate and do your question so that you don't lose any marks. Always read quite carefully on top. Don't just look at the picture below, you know. Look, read very carefully and make sure you don't lose marks for easy questions also. Okay, there will only be a few handful of difficult, tricky ones. Okay, usually plant transport system is the one that's a bit tricky. Now, I'm going to make another video, so this is not too long, for booklet B, which is where most students have difficulties in. So, drop me questions and message me if you need any help. And all the best for your PSLE revision.